like wing group and uh, thanks for prof Zhao Xiangyu for sharing this uh, insightful topic here today uh, i'm Xinyuan. i'm a second year phd student uh, in the wing group so uh, today's talk is about uh, 45 minutes and then there's a, a 15 minutes qa session so um, first, let me introduce Prof Zhao. Um, Prof Zhao Xiangyu is currently an assistant professor of the School of Data Science at uh, City University of Hong Kong. Uh, his current uh, research interests uh, include data mining and machine learning, especially information retrieval and its application in personal, uh, personalization, recommendation system, and re reinforcement learning, etc. He has um, published more than 20 papers in top conferences such as uh, KDD, uh, AAAI, CIR, and CIKM. Um, so uh, today, um, uh, Prof. Zhao Xiangyu is, uh, is going to give a talk about deep reinforcement learning for a recommendation system. So, uh, let's welcome uh, his talk today and Prof. Zhao. So here's your floor. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Xin Yang. Uh, now, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Xin Yang, for the introduction and thanks for Professor Khan for the uh, invitation. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Xiang Yu. Uh, today I will talk about deeper reinforcement learning and uh, its applications in the recommender system. Uh, okay, this is the self introduction. Let me skip this part. Uh, okay, so uh, now we receive a lot of uh, information every day from the different platform. So it indeed become harder and for harder for us to locate what the information we want. So I think typically we have two ways to address this issue. When you search, right, you give a query and the search engine will return the information you want. And the second one is about recommendations. So the task of recommendations is actually it want to suggest items that best match user's preference. So the challenge of recommendation is that we don't have the information need from users, right? We don't have the query. So for a typical recommender system, we will do two things. Okay, the first is we want to learn the user's preference from his profile. For example, your gender, your age, and your browsing history. And the second thing is according to user's preference, we want to suggest the item that match the preference. So the second step is more about how to generate recommendations. So uh, although there are many solutions for these two steps, and there are still some challenging problems in recommended system, especially in the recommendation policies. This is because we found that the most recommended system, it considers the recommendation procedure as an offline optimization and only focus on the short-term reward. For example, uh, in this case, when we use matrix factorization, we, use, we build a user model offline, and once the model is built, it is fixed when we launch it online. So that's why it's an offline optimization. And once we found the user may like uh, this book, this book, uh, we will immediately recommend this book. So we don't consider the long-term inference. But following this way, actually, there are some uh, obvious disadvantage. So first, uh, we will overlook the real-time feedback from users because we found that uh, once we learn the user model offline, it is fixed when we launch it online. And the second challenge is that, as I just mentioned, typically they focus on the immediate reward. So basically, we want to guarantee once we recommend an item to a user, the user will be likely to buy it, but we don't consider the long-term inference on user appearance. So what's the disadvantage of this policy uh, is you will get things more and more similar. So for example, uh, last year is the election time of the US. And one day I watched some debates between Biden and Trump. And the second day, I get some recommendations about the debates. So I feel excited because it's just the second day. So I give some positive feedback. But uh, after a few days, I get more and more debate videos. 
uh, I feel really bored. So if you, if you always follow this kind of short-term reward, you will get more and more similar recommendations. And eventually there is no surprise at all. Okay, uh, so why we want to introduce reinforcement learning recommendations? So let me first introduce the basic idea of uh, reinforcement learning. So in reinforcement learning, there is an agent and the environment. So the agent will take some action and the environment will give reward to these actions. And of course, uh, these actions will influence the uh, agent's future state. So through the interaction uh, with the environment, the goal of the agent is to, is to learn uh, the best action to maximize the reward. Okay, this is a high level idea of the reinforcement learning. So for example, in the video uh, game Atari, the environment is the game system and the agent is an RL agent or RL algorithm. Uh, it wants to learn how to play the game. So the state is the pixels we can observe. And uh, there are three actions, go left, go right, and fair. So after taking each action, the environment will provide a reward and the RL agent aim to maximize the total reward of the game. So from this example, we can find that at each time, the agent will receive the state and it will receive the reward with the typically a scalar and uh, it will execute uh, an action. And uh, accordingly, the environment will receive the action and uh, emit the state and the reward. Okay, this is the basic idea of reinforcement learning. And uh, there are some successful applications of reinforcement learning. Uh, one of the most uh, successful or famous applications is the AlphaGo. Uh, it can beat the top Go player in the world. And uh, there are also some other applications. For example, it can play the video games, uh, explore the world, control the physical systems, and uh, interact with the uh, users, uh, such as the recommendations we will discuss later. Okay, these are the applications of reinforcement learning. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, continue to introduce the RL agent. So actually, an uh, RL agent may include one or more of these three components. The first is the value function, uh, which can predict the value uh, for each state and the action. And the second one is the policy. It maps the current state to action. And the last one is the model. Uh, which is an uh, agent's recommendation of the environment. And uh, I will introduce the details of them later. Uh, okay, so before I introduce the details of RL agents, uh, I would like to first introduce what is deep RL. So uh, actually it's very easy to guess from the name, right? Uh, deep RL just use deep neural network to represent the value functions policy and uh, the model. For example, in the value function or Q value, uh, the traditional able to uh, store all the Q values of the state and the action pairs. Uh, and uh, but uh, in the real world applications, the number of state and action is uh, is quite large, so it's difficult or impossible to store all the Q values. So we introduced a deep neural network to predict the Q value given a state action pair. So this is a deep RL. So, okay, let's go back to the RL components, the value function, policy, and the model. So first is a value function. So basically a value function is a prediction of the future reward. Uh, in other words, it wants to predict how much reward I will get from the action A uh, in the state S. So the Q value function, it will give the expected total reward of the action and then takes the action with the optimal value. And uh, the famous algorithm such as Dyna, Q learning, Sasa, and the deep Q network belongs to the value function method. 
and the most famous one is DQN or Deep Neural Network. And uh, there are two classic uh, DQN architecture. So for the left one, it uh, input the state and uh, an action, and it predicts the Q values of this state action pair. And for the right one, it uh, only input the state and uh, uh, predicts the Q values of all the possible actions at the same time. So this is the value function and the deep Q network. Uh, the second component of RL is the policy. So actually a policy is the agent's behavior. So in other words, it directly search the uh, policy space and learn the probabilities of taking the uh, actions and then sample the action according to the probabilities. Uh, so in policy-based method, action with a small or very small probability, such as 0 0.1, it may also be sampled. So this is the policy of Rinpen learning. So the last one uh, the, uh, of RL is a uh, model. So actually we, we can directly build a model or transition model of the environment during the interaction with the, with the environment. And then we can treat the model as a proxy of the environment. And then an RL agent or here, or a planner, uh, it can interact with the model we learned and plan the actions in the near future using the uh, look ahead search. So this is the basic idea of model in reinforcement learning. Okay, to summarize, uh, the policy based RL it aims to directly search the optimal policy, and the value based RL it aims to estimate the optimal value function. And the model-based RL, it aims to build a transition model of the environment. So these are the uh, high-level ideas of RL. And the next I will introduce why we use RL to solve the real-world uh, challenges in the recommended system. Okay, uh, so we when we introduce reinforced learning for recommendations, it typically has two advantages. The first, uh, the recommendation policy, it will be updated continuously according to the user's real-time feedback during the interaction with the users. So for example, if you purchase an item, uh, we will give a positive reward to the system. The system will reinforce this kind of uh, recommendation policies. Uh, but if you skip the items, uh, we will have a negative reward. So basically the system will try to avoid this kind of recommendation policy. So this is one advantage of reinforcement learning for recommendations. And uh, the second advantage is actually when we use reinforcement learning, we consider more about the long-term reward. For example, we recommend uh, something to you, probably you will buy it and you will stop this session. There is no falling up. But if we recommend an iPhone to you, you will also buy the case, buy the charger, and buy the earphone in, the, uh, in this session. So when we use uh, reinforcement learning, basically we try to maximize this kind of long-term reward from the users. So uh, this is the outline uh, of the papers we will introduce. Uh, we have uh, three groups for single scenario recommendations, are for multi uh, recommendations, and uh, uh, the online environment simulator of the R based recommendations. And uh, we will also introduce some survey papers uh, summarize the R for recommendations. Okay, uh, uh, typically the first group of studies, uh, it is uh, learn the user's sequential behavior in one type of recommendations, such as the home page of a e-commerce platform. Uh, and the second group it studies the uh, uh, sequential behaviors in multi, uh, multiple scenarios, such as the user's sequential behavior in the home page and the shopping cart page. And also the second uh, group, it will also uh, study user's sequential behavior in multiple uh, with multiple type of items, such as the recommendations and the advertisements. Okay, 
uh, let me first introduce the first paper uh, in the first group. Uh, so the uh, so just in the reference learning, we consider the uh, interaction between users and the system. So let's look at how does a real world interaction look like. So in a typical interaction, the uh, uh, the recommended system will recommend a page of items to the user. You can just imagine in Amazon, right? And then the user will give feedback. He can click, he can purchase, and so on. And the recommended system will update its policy according to the feedback, and then recommend a new page of items, and so on, until the user terminates this session. So to capture this kind of interaction, actually there are several challenges. The first one is since the user is continuously providing feedback. So that's why actually when we need to update our policy according to the real-time feedback. Uh, and the second thing is nowadays in a real-world recommend system, they typically recommend a page of items as a whole. So how can we recommend a page of diverse and complementary items? So why we need a diverse and complementary page? Because we try to increase the chance that the user will click or purchase on this page. For example, if we just provide a lot of cell phone in the in one page, uh, I don't think it is a good way because actually most cell phones are exchangeable to each other. So that's why we need to provide the diverse and the complementary items. Uh, also, uh, also, because each time we recommend a two page of item, a two dimensional page of items. So this is different from the ranking in a one dimensional list. So the third challenge is how to put the items properly in the page. So this is more about the item display policy. So now the question is, can we address these three challenges by reinforcement learning at the same time? So then we propose the page wise recommendation model. Okay, uh, before I present the details of the framework, I would like to uh, introduce the reference learning architecture we use. So in this paper, we use actor critical architecture. So different from the traditional DQN uh, network, uh, the actor critical, it can handle the dynamic item space and uh, it can reduce the training time. So in our page wide recommendations, we use the actor critical architecture. So the next question is how can we design the actor and the critic? So I will introduce these two components in details. So first we will consider the design of the actor. So what's the goal of the actor? So actually uh, in this case, because we do the page-wise recommendations and the state is the previous pages we have done and the action is a page of items we want to recommend. So the, the goal of the actor is to generate a page of recommendations according to user's browsing history. Uh, so here is the structure of the actor. It uh, contains two parts. One is the encoder. So basically we input the previous pages we have browsed and uh, we output the embedding of the current user's preference. And for the decoder, we will input the user's preference and we will predict the next page of items. So this is a two part of the actor. I will introduce layer by layer. So the input of the encoder are the information of the items in a page. For example, uh, we have its identifier for, for an item. We have its identifier, which is unique for each item. And uh, we have the items category because we want to generate the diverse recommendations. And we also have the user's feedback because we want to capture user's interest in one page. And then we transform these information into embeddings and then we concatenate these embeddings as the item embedding as a whole. So this is uh, uh, for the input layer or embedding layer. Uh, and then we place the item embeddings at the original locations 
in the page. And then we can get a two dimensional page matrix. So the next question is how to learn the spatial pattern to put the items in page. So we can find that uh, the two dimensional page matrix is similar to an image. And uh, we can also consider the item embeddings, uh, the, the embedding values as the pixels. So then we introduce a CNN layer to learn the spatial pattern of items within the page. Uh, and the next, we use a GRU with a attention layer to capture user uh, preference among the different pages. And finally, the encoder will output the embedding of user's current preference. So now uh, we have introduced all the details of the encoder. So for the decoder, uh, given the embedding vector of user preference, a, we aim to generate a page of items. Uh, it's also a matrix. So it aims to address two tasks. One is to generate a set of items. And the second is to put the items properly in a page. So then the challenge is, can we, uh, can we address these two tasks at the same time? So our solution is using a deconvolutional neural network. It is an inverse process of uh, uh, what a standard CN does. It can recover an image from an embedding vector. So since uh, we, so uh, then we can use the DCN to generate a page matrix from the embedding vector of user's preference. And by using DCN, uh, the decoder can generate next page of items and learn to put the item. Uh, so uh, uh, now uh, we have introduced all the details of the encoder decoder structure of the of the actor. So next uh, we will introduce the critic. So for the critic, uh, it takes the user's preference, uh, the, the 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 embedding of user preference and a, a page of items and it aims to predict the Q values. So here, a higher Q values means uh, this page of items can lead a larger long-term reward. So according to the Bellman equation, the evaluation of current Q value, it should equal to the current reward plus the Q values of the next state action pair. So uh, this is the page value recommendation paper. It can update the recommendation policy based on users' real-time feedback. Uh, it can optimize the long-term reward, and it can learn how to put the items in a page. Okay, next I will introduce the second paper, uh, which consider users' negative feedback uh, into the RL-based recommendations. Uh, so in most existing recommend system, it consider more about the items that the user provide positive feedback, such as a uh, click or purchase the items. So by learning this positive feedback, we can learn what user may like. So why we want to capture the negative feedback? Because uh, such as the user skip or leave the, uh, or skip the items. So because the negative feedback is show user uh, what user may not like. So by uh, introducing the negative feedback, we can avoid the bad recommend recommendation case, uh, such as uh, recommend, uh, recommending a skirt to a male user. So however, uh, capture uh, the negative feedback is quite challenging. So one reason is the number of negative feedback is much more than the positive feedback, but we don't want the negative feedback to bury the positive ones. And another is user's negative feedback may not because user dislikes the items. That may be because the user don't pay attention or, or other reasons. So how to identify the items that the user really dislike is another challenge. And finally, uh, this weak or wrong negative feedback can introduce noise. So this paper will aim to solve these three challenges. So uh, this paper, uh, we first design a novel DQN architecture. So the input layer and the first few uh, hidden layers of the uh, network are separate uh, to two parts. So one part is the positive state that uh, can learn from the recent uh, positive 
uh, feedback, such as click and order the item, and the action with the potential item to recommend. And uh, another part is the negative state that I learned from the recently skipped items uh, and the action. So the iteration, iteration of this design is to recommend the item that is similar to the items with positive feedback and uh, dissimilar to the item with the negative feedback. So they uh, and we use RN with GRU to capture user's sequential preference. And uh, to handle the weak or wrong negative feedback, we found that the recommend system often recommend the items belong to the same category, such as the cell phone, and the user will click or, uh, or other a part of them and uh, skip the others. So uh, we propose a novel regularization term. It maximizes the difference between the Q values of two similar items, uh, but the user have different feedback. One is positive and uh, the other is negative. So this partial order can help to identify the users, uh, uh, the, 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 the items the user really don't like from the some similar items. So this is uh, our second paper. Uh, it designed a novel DQN architecture and a regularization term. Uh, it can efficiently capture users' positive and the negative feedback from the uh, further recommendations. Uh, the third paper is a deep reinforcement learning framework for news recommendations. So uh, this paper also follows the classic setting of uh, reinforcement learning based recommendations and uh, models uh, 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 the recommendation as a MDP. So here uh, they define the environment is the user pool and the news pool, and the agent is the recommendation algorithm. The state is the feature, uh, the feature of users, and the action is the feature of the news. So here the news is the items. And the reward is two parts. Uh, one is uh, the click skip labels, and the other is the estimation of the user's active, activities. So because they want to keep the user active in the system. So for the user's activities, uh, they use hard function to model it. So for, uh, for instance, uh, as shown in the figure, the user act, uh, activities start to start to decay from time zero, and uh, at time t one, the user return, uh, and uh, this result in you know, an increase in the user's activities, and then the user's activity, uh, the activities continue to decay after t one, and uh, similar things happen again and again. And also in this paper. Uh, the user features and the uh, con contextual features are used as the state uh, uh, state features and uh, the user's news features and the contextual uh, features are used as the action features. So this design is because uh, on one hand, the reward for taking action at a certain state is closely uh, related to all the features. And uh, on the other hand, the reward uh, that are uh, defined by the feature of a user it, uh, itself, uh, himself, such as whether the user is active, is mainly influenced by the user and the contextual features only. So based on these uh, observations, uh, the authors uh, use the dual-dealing DQN and uh, divide the Q function into the value function VS and the advantage function ASA. So here the value function is only determined by the state features and the action function is defined by both the state features and the action features. Okay, uh, another novelty of this paper is it proposed a novel exploration method. So the traditional exploration method such as random exploration, it will harm users appearance in the short term. Uh, but the the multi uh, multi arm banded methods, uh, it have the same issue, and uh, they have a large variance, so they take a long time to convert. So in this paper, they propose an effective uh, effective uh, operation method. So it has two network. 
the current network queue and the explore uh, network queue tool. So, and the training per, uh, step is first, uh, it gets the recommendations from queue and the queue tool. And then the uh, probabilities interleave these two, uh, two lists. Uh, and then they generate the feedback from users and uh, compare the preference uh, between the two network. And if the q performs better, uh, we will update the q towards the q And if the, uh, if the uh, how say, uh, otherwise, the agent will keep the network queue and, uh, unchanged. And through this kind of iteration, the agent can do more effectiveness operation and uh, with, without losing the recommendation qualities. So this is a DRN paper for the news recommendations. So that's the three papers for in the single scenario. Uh, next, I will introduce the papers of the recommendation. Go to the multi scenario. Okay. Uh, so in the real world recommend system, uh, user often uh, sequentially interacts with multiple scenarios in one recommendation session, and the different scenarios have different objective. So for example, the user may start the recommendation session by browsing the items in the entrance page or the home page. So uh, in this page, uh, it uh, suggests diverse and the complementary uh, items to match users' uh, various pre preference. And in this page, the user can skip the recommendations and uh, continue to browsing the new recommendations, or it can uh, go to the item detail page if the user click one preferred uh, items. And uh, in the item detail page, uh, it has shown more more details of the clicked item. And uh, uh, the agent in this page, it will generate a set of recommendations related to the uh, this item for user to compare with. So the user can go back to the entrance page uh, and uh, he can go to another item detail page uh, if the user click uh, one recommendations. And the user can also add the clicked item into the shopping cart and uh, go to the shopping cart page. And uh, then in the shopping cart page, and uh, even after the user purchased some items, there are still some uh, recommendations in each page. So from this example, we can find that there is a sequence of the related pages or related uh, scenarios. And the recommendations in the different scenario have different objective. For example, in this page, in the interim page, we want to generate uh, diverse recommendations. And for the item detail page, we want to generate some similar recommendations to the clicked ones for user to compare. Uh, so so, the, so we have different uh, objective in different pages. So only optimize one recommend agent for all the scenario, it will overlook these different uh, objectives. So another solution is separately optimizing each recommend agent for each scenario. So however, this then, uh, design, it will also lead to the suboptimal performance. So uh, first, uh, it will ignore the sequential dependency of user behaviors in the different uh, scenarios. And the second, uh, optimizing each uh, agent for each scenario, it will only use the user behavior data of this scenario and uh, ignore the other data. And uh, the third uh, separate optimization for uh, of one scenario, it only optimize the, um, uh, the objective in this page and uh, it may negatively influence the overall performance of the whole recommendation session. So to address these challenges, we formulate the recommendation task in the sequential scenarios as a whole chain recommendation problems and uh, leverage multi-agent reinforcement learning to jointly optimize all the recommendation agents. So we propose an uh, actor-critic framework. So here 
the each individual actor is the recommended agent in one scenario, and the global critic it will control all the actors and enable them to work together to optimize the overall performance. And also in our framework, the agents are sequentially activated to capture users' behaviors in different scenarios. And all the agents, it shares the memory of the whole user behavior data. And all the agents, it work together or work collaboratively to optimize the overall performance of the whole recommendation session. So in this paper, uh, we use off policy method to optimize user, uh, the, the optimize our model based on the offline user data. So for example, in a uh, user in the entrance page, uh, and then the agent of this page will recommend a item, uh, recommend an item to the user. And the, the user may take three type of behaviors. First, uh, the user can skip the item and the agent of interest page will continue to recommend uh, to continue to recommend the next recommendations and this will lead to a non zero q value and uh, the second behavior is the users click the recommended item and the agent of the interest page it will receive a positive immediate reward and the user will go to the item detail page and the uh, the agent in this page will recommend uh, uh, the next recommendations and uh, this action will lead to a non-zero Q value. And uh, the third uh, behavior is the user will leave the platform uh, because the user is not satisfied with the recommendations and uh, the agent in the insurance page it will only receive a negative reward. So this is for the insurance page and we have some similar analysis for the other scenarios. So also in our framework, we use the model-based RL to estimate the user behaviors or the, the, the transitions. So, so, so the model-based RL, it can reduce the requirement of the training data amount, and it can perform the more accurate optimization of the Q function. So this is the deep chain model it can capture users' sequential behavior uh, in the different scenario and optimize the overall performance of the whole recommendation session. Okay. Uh, because the limit time, I will skip another. Actually, the second paper is similar and it's also uh, use uh, create actor, uh, the, the actor critical network. Uh, the idea is quite similar, so I will skip and uh, go to the third paper. So the third paper... Yeah, we can uh, go a little bit over time because we had questions interleaved as well, so it's no problem. Please go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, oh, uh, okay, uh, let's... So the, also, uh, so then I can also introduce this paper briefly. So the model also has a global critic network to evaluate the overall reward, And it has a communication module to generate the message that are shared by the actors. So this message is encoded the historical behaviors or historical observations and the actions, and can be used to represent the global state of the environment. And each actor is represent an agent and it receives the own of the uh, it's a, a local observations and a communication message and uh, it can make the private actions in the uh, local environment and uh, this is the detailed structure the global critic it will estimate the q function uh, it can indicate the future reward when uh, when they taking the actions based on the message and the observations. Uh, and the criti uh, the actor, actor network, it will output the, uh, uh, the output an action with a given message and the local observation as the input. And the message are updated by a communication component 
it can take the observations OT and the action AT as the input. So this is a, actually this is the second model. Uh, it's also for the uh, multiple scenario recommendations. So the next, I will introduce the scenario sphere user interacts with different type of items, such as the recommendations and the advertisements. Uh, so in a real world recommend system, besides the normal recommendations, we also have advertisements, right? Such as in Amazon, we have the sponsored product. If we show this product to the users, the advertisers will pay for this advertising impression. So the goal of online advertising is to maximize the revenue from the advertisers. So to achieve this goal, uh, we should assign the right advertisement to the right user as the right place. So some efforts have been made of develop uh, to develop a reinforcement learning based uh, uh, advertisement. Uh, however, um, most existing work is focused on the maximizing the advertising revenue only, and it will ignore the user's negative influence on user experience. So actually in a typical uh, recommendation system, the recommendations and the advertisement, they are optimized by two teams. They have different goals. They use different models. So it usually uh, has a suboptimal overall performance. Uh, for example, if we display too much advertisement, we can have a higher advertising revenue, but the user will be mad because they have bad appearance. Uh, and uh, on the mm, on the other hand, if we show fewer advertisements, the advertising revenue will go down. So my research tried to design a new method uh, to jointly optimize the advertising uh, advertising revenue and the user appearance. Uh, so for example, in the KDD paper, uh, we built a two-level reinforcement learning framework to jointly optimize the overall performance of the recommendation model and the advertising model. So the first level is a recommended system. So up on user's request, the system will capture user preference from the historical behavior and generate a list of recommendations that best match user's preference. And the recommended system is aimed to optimize the long-term user appearance or the user engagement. And the main challenge is that we need to select a sub subset of items from the large item space. So it has a high uh, computational cost. So in this, uh, in this model or in this layer, uh, we leverage a cascading DQN for the recommender system. So it can generate a list of recommendations by sequentially uh, selecting items in a cascading manner. So the cascading DQN, it can reduce the uh, comp uh, complexity of selecting a subset of items from a large item space to the complexity of K times N. So here the N is the number of candidate items and the K is the length of the recommendation list. Uh, and the second level is a uh, advertising system. It inserts, uh, it inserts advertisements into the given recommendation list, and it need to take three decisions. So first, uh, it will decide whether to insert an advertisement into the recommendation list, and the, if the answer is yes, uh, it also need to decide which advertisement and where to insert. So the goal of the advertising system is to jointly optimize the advertising, new, uh, advertising revenue from the uh, advertisers and minimize the negative influence of uh, advertisement on the user appearance. So to make these three decisions, uh, we propose a novel DQN architecture. So the input is a state action pair. So here the state includes uh, historical recommendations and uh, advertisements, the contextual information, and the recommendation list. 
generated by the recommender systems. And the action is the embedding of an uh, advertisement. And uh, so, so this part is uh, for the decision three. And the output are the Q values of this advertisement and uh, for all the locations. Uh, and we can select the maximum one and this uh, this uh, solve the decision to the optimal location and uh, to solve the first task uh, we add a special unit at the output layer uh, it is the uh, q values of not inserting an advertisement into the recommendation list uh, if this q values is the maximum q value we will not insert an advertisement so this framework can Takes the uh, makes these three decisions at the same time, uh, and finally, the target user will browse the mixed list of the recommendation and the advertisement and provide the feedback. And according to the feedback, the recommender system and the advertising system will update their policy and generate the list of the next user request. So what uh, need to note is that uh, compared with the uh, the classical DQN architectures, uh, that can only evaluate the Q values for one type of actions. Our model is the first uh, DQN architecture. It can evaluate the Q values of uh, multiple type of actions, such as uh, which is the best advertisement and uh, where is the best location. So they, they belongs to the multiple uh, types. Uh, and also compare with the DQN in figure B, uh, it will need A times L, A, A times L for the propagations. Uh, our architecture, it only needs the A times. So our model can also, uh, it uh, has the much, how to say, the better training efficiency. So these are the papers of recommend, recommendations in the multiple scenarios. And uh, next we will introduce the online environment simulator. Uh, okay, uh, we will introduce the environment simulator for uh, IR based recommendations. So uh, as I introduced before, the IR based recommendation models, they are highly depends on the user's real-time feedback. Uh, so the most practical way is uh, the online A-B test. So in this way, a new recommendation algorithm is trained based on the feedback from the new users or the real users. And then its performance is compared with the current recommendation model working online. So however, uh, we think the online A-B test is inefficient and expensive because there are three reasons. So first is, it usually takes several weeks to uh, to uh, to get the sufficient data, and the second reason is actually a lot of engineering efforts are necessary to deploy the new algorithms online, and finally the online A/B tests they often lead to the bad user experience because when we deploy a new model online, the its parameters are randomly in, in, initialized. So user will have bad experience. So because of these three reasons, we cannot quickly learn and test a new RL-based recommendation model by the online A-B test. So in this work, uh, we build a user simulator based on the user's his historical data. Uh, it can generate the real-time feedback like the real users. And then we can use this generated feedback to pre-train and pre, uh, pre and evaluate the new recommendation algorithms before we launch them online. So, uh, however, simulating users' real-time feedback is a challenging task. So one is actually the underlying, underlying distribution of the item sequence is very complex in the historical data. This is because a lot of uh, we have a large, uh, large amount of items in the practical recommender systems. And the second challenge is actually to learn a robust simulator. We need a lot of historical data for each user. 
but in the real world system, the data available to each user is usually limited. So to tackle these two challenges, we propose a user simulator based on the GAN framework. So here the generator is aimed to learn the item distributions from the user's historical data, and then generate the fake items that are similar to the real items. And the discriminator is want to distinguish the real and the fake items. And at the same time, it aims to predict the types of users' real-time feedback on the, uh, on the items. So in the following, uh, I will introduce the details of the generator and the discriminator. Okay, uh, to optimize the discriminator, we have the supervised and the unsupervised loss. So the unsupervised, uh, unsupervised loss is similar to a classical GAN model. It aims to distinguish the real items and the fake items. Uh, so, okay. Uh, I can introduce more details. So here, the probabilities of an item is classified as real. Is the uh, is the so here uh, is the summation of the probabilities of k real feedback, and they are in the red color uh, in the figure, and uh, it's similar to the fake items. Uh, it's in the original color, and then the uh, unsupervised. Uh, unsupervised loss is compute like a standard uh, GAN model. And besides the unsupervised loss, we also have the supervised loss. It aims to predict the types of users' feedback. So here we consider this task is a classification problem and then use cross entropy loss to minimize the difference between users' ground truth feedback and the prediction. And here we uh, apply the cross entropy loss for the uh, real items and the fake items separately. Uh, and finally, the overall loss function of the discriminator is the weighted sum of the supervised loss and the unsupervised loss. So this is the loss for the discriminator. And uh, for the generate, we also, uh, we also have the supervised and the un unsupervised loss. So the unsupervised loss is also similar to a classical GAN model. It minimizes the probabilities that the user, the generated items is classified as the fake items. And for the supervised loss, it aims to minimize the dis uh, distance between the real items from the data and the generated item from the generator. So this can help to generate items that are similar or close to the real items. And finally, uh, we weighted sum the supervised and the unsupervised part as the overall loss function of the generator. And then uh, to optimize the whole framework, we can alternately update the loss of the discriminator and the generator. So to validate the performance of the, our user simulator model, we train a DQN-based recommended system uh, based on our simulator. So, and uh, then and uh, we use the total reward of our session as the metric to evaluate the model, uh, the, the model training. And uh, we have two baseline. One is directly training a reinforcement learning mo uh, recommendation model based on the historical data. So another is the training of the system up on the IREC GAN. So the IREC GAN is a, a strong baseline to simulating the users. So we can find that our model converts to the similar reward with the one, uh, the recommended system up on the historical data, the real historical data. And our model is uh, more stable than the model uh, training uh, trained based on the IREC GAN. So this uh, result means that our model can take place the real users to train the RL based recommendation models. And besides our model, there are also some existing user simulation model, such as the Rexim from Google. Uh, this model uses the dynamic Bayesian network. And the Rec, uh, Regime from the Critio, uh, it uses the bandit model. And the GAN PW and the virtual top ball 
uh, from the Alibaba, uh, and they are based uh, they are based on the inverse RL or the imitation learning. So please refer to their papers for more details. Uh, okay, uh, finally, uh, there are some survey papers to summarize the uh, uh, fundamental and the recent advance of reinforcement learning for the recommendations. So one is our survey paper, Deep Reinforcement Learning for Search Recommendation and the Online Advertising. It's published in uh, the two, uh, 2019. And in this survey, we group the papers based on the uh, recommendation problems to solve. For example, uh, in the IL for recommendations, we study the exploration and the exploitation and the user's dynamic preference modeling, the long-term user engagement, and the uh, slate recommendation problems. Uh, and our uh, survey also st uh, studied the important uh, problems in RL for search and the RL for online advertising. So this is the first survey. And the second survey paper is Riven Learning Based uh, Recommender System is published in this year. So this paper, uh, the papers are based on the classical RL uh, methods such as Q-learning, uh, reinforce, uh, actor critic, and the uh, component methods. So this is the second survey. Uh, and the third survey is also published in this year. And uh, the papers are grouped based on the recommendation applications, such as the uh, interactive recommendations, uh, uh, conversational recommendations, sequential recommendations. And the last survey, uh, uh, this survey is also published in this year. And uh, they are grouped on the IR, also group on the IR method. Uh, and uh, they also discuss some, some no, uh, new problems, such as, the, uh, uh, such as the environment simulation, the state representation, the reward function design. And uh, they also talk about some emerging, uh, emerging topics, such as the multi-agent IR, has uh, hierarchical RL, inverse RL, GN based RL, and the uh, self supervised uh, deep RL for recommendations. So these are the uh, four survey papers, and uh, please refer to them uh, according to your preference. Uh, okay, to, uh, in conclusion, the RL based recommender system it have two advantages. Uh, the first is uh, the recommendation policy will be updated continuous according to users uh, during the interaction, according to users real-time feedback. And the second advantage is we, when we use reinforcement learning, we consider more about the long-term reward. So that's all for this talk. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Let's thank our speaker.